Father, I just thank you. I thank you for the word that's been going forth all day, Father. And I just thank you. You're such a good God, Father. And I thank you for, for your word that you've been feeding us, Father, because we feed on your word. It feeds our faith. And I just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead and put up Romans 4, 19. Hallelujah. You know how God can just quickly give you something, especially when it's thrown on you quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and he does it not just to me; he just did it to Rob this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans four nineteen says, <clears throat> "And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old." Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was <coughs> strong in faith, giving glory to God. Being fully persuaded, what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. <coughs> Good. It says he um, staggered not at the promise. This is Abraham, and you know, um, we know the story of Abraham and Sarah and of their son that they conceived Isaac in their old age. Uh, it says he staggered not at the promise. Why did he stagger not? Well, it says right after that, in the rest of the verse, because he considered not. Well, it says that before that, actually. He can, because he considered not, he staggered not. So he considered not his body, his circumstances, and um, the conditions of what he saw. So we're not to consider the problem. We're not to consider the symptoms. That's right. We're not to consider the lack. Mm -hmm. Or what we're, we're experiencing. We're not to consider. It's not based on our experience. Mm -hmm. Though we're having an experience. Most definitely. Um, so we don't want to talk those things. We don't want to talk the problem all day and all night. Right? Because that just reinforces that. And that's my son Aaron trying to call me. <laughs> I just have to call later. Um, so if we continue to talk those things, what are we going to be? If we consider them, we're going to be weak in faith. He says he wasn't weak in faith because he considered not. And then he staggered not. So if you consider the problem, you're going to be weak in faith and you won't be able to escape it. But you don't have to consider it. Even though it's there, you don't have to mind it to keep it on your mind. You don't have to think about it all the time. You don't have to talk about it all the time. You can consider Him. You can look at Him and what He said, right? That's right. Um, consider Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, right? You can remind yourself of what He told you about the things that you're dealing with. So if Abraham would have looked at himself and at his body and at Sarah and her condition, that he's going to be discouraged, right? He's going to go, wow, this ain't happening, right? If he was to look and consider that. But he didn't look at that. He considered what God had said to him and told him. I have made you the father of many nations, right? And he agreed with God and called those things that be not as though they were. And he started calling himself by another name. He started putting it in his name that I am the father of many nations. And they haven't even had one child yet, right? Right? Not one child. Because that's how faith does it, isn't it? It's, it's the way faith works. Faith shouts while the walls are still up. Faith thanks God for the healing. Why they're, you're still hurting the worst you've ever hurt in your life. Mm -hmm. Why the symptoms are the worst that you've ever had, right? Mm -hmm. Faith shouts and says what God says. What God has said all along. Faith thanks God for meeting all my needs, right? Faith thanks God even when there's a pile of bills sitting on the table and you have no clue how you're going to pay them, right? We thank God that every bill is paid. That's right. Every need is met, right? Amen. Cause my body healed. Says I have long life. Yes. Let the weak say that I am strong. And he will satisfy me and show me his salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Faith doesn't talk uh, and think according to what it sees or feels. Mm -hmm. Though you will see and feel lots of things. So we walk by faith, not by sight. We look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
These are just nice phrases, are they? Yeah. We're supposed to live this way. Right. We're yeah. supposed to live by these words. If you want to please God, you've got to be a faith person. If you want to overcome, you've got to be a faith person. And you think, well, I know that, I know that. <clears throat> but the enemy can get in there and slowly erode you with things that he is saying, and you don't even notice that. You say, we can say, I'm a faith person. Because the reason I'm saying this is because it's evident in my life. And this is why God did have me teach it. And uh, let's see, uh, verse 20 says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Staggered not because he considered not. Stagger can also be translated waver. Why do people have trouble not wavering? Because they're still considering the wrong thing. And um, if you want not to waver, you have to not consider. And all that is right there in these two or three verses. He staggered not because he considered not, and that made him not weak in faith. So, so he gave glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Verse 21. And um, so he didn't see it, see it or feel it. And nobody around him was seeing it. Right? Or could tell him how this could happen. But God told him. And he had heard from God. And he considered that instead of all these other symptoms, instead of all these other contradictions. So it's up to us to make the choice to consider or to not consider whether our faith grows or our faith wanes or gets weak. So we can feed our fear or we can feed our faith. And one or the other is going to get stronger, whatever one we're feeding. Amen. So we want to starve our doubts and fears and we want to feed our faith. So we starve our doubts and fears, they get weaker. Mm -hmm. We feed our faith and it gets stronger. So we need to do this what? On a regular, daily basis. In the Word, in prayer, in fellowship, in any other ways. Mm -hmm. Diligently seeking. Diligently seeking, right? Mm -hmm. Going to the conference as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then don't, you know, don't beat yourself up. You miss one, you go, oh, right. But it's your heart. Yes. God's looking at your heart. Amen. You're, you're, you're striving to put Him first, to honor Him. Yeah. That's what fear of the Lord is, is to honor or reverence the things of God. Mm -hmm. Making them more important. Jesus said, first, seeking first the kingdom of God. Why? Because that's the most important. Put it first, and all these other things, you got it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> So, if, if something's ministered to you in the past, now here's the thing, too. We can hear a good sermon, and then we move on. And we thought, well, well I've heard that. That's not a good thing. It's just like, um, I don't know, eating a certain food, like potatoes or corn or something. Has anybody eaten them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than once? Yep. Mm -hmm. More than ten times? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And on and on and on. Corn from the 70s, still... Uh, fills you up and ministers to you and helps you and makes you feel satisfied, just like corn today. It feeds you, right? And so does that word. So if you've ever heard a good word and it really ministered to you, it's good to go back sometimes and feed on that again. And it will minister to you. And um, because sometimes I think we're, we start to look for things that are new and shiny. You know, and something that will tickle our fancy, you know. And there's nothing wrong with those things because God wants to give the new. Mm -hmm. But He wants you to be established and strong in what He's building in you, right? Mm -hmm. So you can be strong in faith as you're reaching out. And then you'll start to see the new. <laughs> you will. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so food is to your body as the Word of God is to your spirit. So when you hear something that ministers to you, eat it again. Now, uh, go over to Romans 10, 6. Just up a little ways. Romans 10, 6 says, But the righteousness, which is of faith, 
speaks on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? And, um, yeah, into the heaven. Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. So Paul was a word of faith preacher, obviously. And um, so here it's saying, um, say not in thy heart. So you can speak in your heart without audibly saying something in the physical. You can speak in your heart, obviously. Because it says, don't say, don't say in your heart. Um, verse 7 says, or shall descend into the deep and bring Christ up again. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. The word is close to you. That means the answer is close to you. That means the miracle is close to you. That means the healing is close to you. That's right. Yes, right? That's right? It's close to everybody. Every one of us. You know, and in, and in this, he's talking about, in verses 9 and 10, it's salvation. Right? This is salvation. He's talking about salvation. So, that means the word is that close to the lost. It's right there. It's right there. So, everybody we know that's lost, that we're believed for, it's right there. Don't worry, it's right there. It'll be like that. Yes. <laughs> So, um, he's talking about safe salvation here and how close that is for the lost. Um, so it says in verse 9, thou, If thou wilt, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in my heart, right, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth the confession is made unto <laughs> salvation. So, when you confess with your mouth, that's an action, isn't it? And you experience the new birth, right? Which is far greater miracle if you want to compare the miracles than uh, a healing or a financial problem, right? Because that's dealing with things that are already here, right? Mm -hmm. An existing structure being um, repaired or um, funds being moved that are already in the earth, right? Um, but the new birth is taking a dead spirit and recreating it in the likeness and image of God, right? Mm -hmm. That will exist throughout eternity, that, that will be a son of the living God, right? That's no small thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, to believe for that is a bigger <laughs> miracle mm -hmm. than to believe for your pile of bills to be paid mm -hmm. or, or your need to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. right? Right. So how quickly can this happen? Well, how quickly can you believe in your heart mm -hmm. and say it with your mouth? And you, won't have to, you don't have to wait to get saved, do you? He's right there when you say it. Mm -hmm. He's right there. The Spirit of God will work in you what you couldn't work in yourself or nobody else could. So, um, so if that's um, true concerning the new birth, it's true in all the manner of things that, that God can do in your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, it works by the same principle. You believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth. And we just read Abraham did that, didn't he? He changed his name. And that way, every day, it was in his mouth. He was saying, you know, people come up, oh, hi, Abraham. Uh, no, Abraham, mm -hmm. father of many nations. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter what anybody else said. He was the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen to that. He listened to what God had told him, right? That's why God gave him to look at the stars and to all these different things that he could focus on instead of focusing on what was going to come against him. Those things came against him. They had to have so don't let people call you broke. Don't let people call you incurable or whatever it is. You know, don't let them think um, that you're not going to see something that they think is impossible. Mm -hmm. You call those things that be not as though they were. Like you said, it's not my bad knee, it's my healed knee, right? It's not my um, broken, uh, my heart problem, it's my healed heart, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. I call my body healed. I call my bills paid. Um, those walking by sight, though, are going to rejoice after it happens, aren't they? And, and until then, they're going to hope and wish and imagine, but have no faith. But faith calls it the way, uh, calls it that way when it doesn't even look that way. That's right. That's what Abraham was doing, wasn't he? That's just how it works. So, when you believed you received Jesus to become the righteousness of God in Christ. Did you look like the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? No. no. <laughs> or feel like the righteousness of God or holiness of God in Christ Jesus? No. 
but you went ahead and confessed Jesus as the Lord anyway. Right? So, and when you believe in your heart and say it with your mouth, it opens the door and gives the Lord access to you. Um, so, we said, if you confess with your mouth, say it in your heart, and that's like, uh, and then um, the, verse 10 says, for with the heart man believes. That's the like, fourth time that he's talked about the heart in this passage. For with the heart man believes. With the heart. With the heart man believes. There is other parts of your being that you don't believe with, right? Faith is of the heart. When he says heart, what is he talking about? He's not talking about our physical blood pump. We know that, right? Right. So you can't believe God with your physical heart is any more than you can believe God with your kidneys or your lungs, right? Um, or any other physical organ. Yet, it's graphic. It's graphic to us. What is the heart to your body? It's the primary organ that if it stops, you stop. I have a little experience. Pastor <laughs> Bob, has, Bob has a lot of experience. Um, it sends life to the rest of the body, right? You say, well, no, it sends blood. Well, life is in the blood, right? So, we might say, people say, well, no, it's the brain. Yeah, but the minute the heart stops, that brain starts to die when it gets cut off from the flow of life to it. And it'll start to shut down immediately. So out of the heart flows life. So go over to Proverbs 4.20. <laughs> Can It says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thine heart. heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. So it's true physically, and it's true spiritually, isn't it? The life flow for the physical body comes through the heart. But there has to be a spirit life or there's nothing to make the heart beat. Right? Yes. What makes the heart beat and the lungs breathe? And what gives the brain life? Well, it's life. And where does life come from? Well, 1 Peter refers to the hidden man of the heart, doesn't it? And this is the part of your being you believe God with. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's go back uh, a chapter to Proverbs 3.5. Proverbs 3, 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Heart. What do you believe with? The heart. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. So here we can see a clear picture or distinction between the heart and understanding. Right? You don't believe God with your understanding. You believe God with your heart. So then your heart is not your understanding, is it? Right. So, because if it is, how can you say, trust the Lord with all your heart, but don't lean to your understanding? Couldn't say that if they were one and the same, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a contradiction. Your understanding is different. Not that it's not needed, but it's different. It's a different part of your being. So when he's talking about the heart, he's not talking about your mind or your thinking or your knowledge or your understanding. Your heart is part of you that can grieve and sorrow or it can rejoice and be glad, right? Being glad, it's not meant just mental. Uh, I, thought, I thought it all through and now I'm glad. <laughs> Glad's not a deduction. So you're not glad with your head, you're glad with your heart. Sorrow and grief. You're not just hurting in your head. It's in your heart. Right? And your heart is part of you that can be broken or it can be elated and ecstatic. Right? Mm -hmm. The term over the moon is not a mental condition. <laughs> right? Right, George? <laughs> I just added that in. <laughs> I can suck up with your last all right. It's not a mental condition, it's a heart condition. <laughs> Full of joy and overflowing and glad is not mental or head. Your heart can be hard or it can be humble. Right? That's not a condition of the mind. 
And so I'm just trying to help us to identify what part of the being we're talking about here. But I think in here in Proverbs 3, 5, it makes it very clear between the heart and understanding and the, and the soul man. It's with the heart man believes, right? It's with the heart that man believes. Go to Mark 11, 23. Very familiar passage, which we all know. Mark 11, 26 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So where do you believe? In your heart. In your heart. Jesus didn't say you'd have it if you said it, did he? Right, he said, you'd have what you say if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe in your heart. So it's not just saying things. So people can say all kinds of stuff that they don't believe. And that doesn't mean they're going to have what they say <coughs> if they don't believe it. Well, I said it, and it didn't come to pass. But now you're telling on yourself. Mm -hmm. You didn't believe it. Right. So, um... Be thou, uh, okay, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Which is not the same as your own understanding, right? You're believing, you're not doubting in your heart, and you, but it's not, it has nothing to do with your understanding, right? Right there. It's in your heart that you believe, not in your understanding. Go over to James 1, 5. James 1, 5. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. God, if you ask, that's the key. A lot of times we get in situations, just a side note, that we go, man, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Well, shut up and ask. <laughs> but a lot of times, the first thing is, what do we do, what do we do? It's focused on, we don't know what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And we keep saying that. <laughs> and guess what? We don't know what to do. <laughs> But if we ask, and and if, there's no stupid question, obviously. It says he doesn't break up rate of nine. Mm -hmm. He's not going to go, oh, you little idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but no. <laughs> but, and he wants to give. He's more than willing. He wants to give you what you need. Um, but now here's the next verse. Yeah. That seems to be uh, a scripture that the devil uses against most believers that don't understand it. It says, But let him ask in faith, not wavering. He that wavereth is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There. <laughs> you're wavering. You're wavering. You're wavering. Don't think you're going to get anything. Did the devil quote scriptures to Jesus? Yes. Yes. yes, he did. Did he quote them the right way? No. No, nope. he misapplied them. He yes. used them, twisted them, misled, tempted with them. Um, so when the devil quotes scriptures, we should never take it serious. Because it's out of context. It's twisted. He's twisted the real meaning of it. And, well, consider the source. He's a known liar. Go over to Mark 9.17. Over here is um, where they brought um, the child that was having the, uh, the fits. Uh, I guess it was epilepsy, maybe. <clears throat> but um, before Jesus, and they, they had, he had brought, the um, Father had brought him before the disciples, and they couldn't do anything, right? 
And um, that's the funny thing. Just because the disciples couldn't get any results, does that mean it wasn't God's will? So that would it be healed? No. Nope. 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 Um, so as you read this, you know, you get an idea. He says, um, verse 18, and uh, whosoever he taketh him, uh, it taketh him, and he teareth him, and he goes on about how he explains, Father explains what goes on with the boy. And Jesus says, O faithless generation, how long shall I uh, be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straight away, the spirit tore him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming right in front of Jesus. Boy, that made Jesus look bad. Jeez. <laughs> Wait a minute, this looks bad. <laughs> Is that what you think Jesus was thinking? No. Um, no. no, no. Not at all. He took the time to talk to the Father. Yeah. That's going on. Yeah. yeah, that's going on. And he asked his Father, well, how long has he been doing this? You know? Yeah. 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 Why, why he's writhing on the ground in front of us. Yeah. And the possibility of being thrown back into the fire or the water, you know? It's all right. Jesus wasn't worried. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Where do I go with that? Oh, oh. So what part? Uh, okay, and verse 23 says, Jesus said unto him, uh, well, first, let me read 22. And oft times is cast into the fire. But if thou canst do any, can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now, this guy's trying to throw it off onto Jesus now, right? Disciples, he said, I brought you. Disciples couldn't do anything, but if you can do anything. And um, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Now, can you believe with your heart and doubt with your heart at the same time? No, you're either believing or you're doubting. One or the other. And he said, straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy my unbelief. And then the next verse, of course, Jesus said, oh, oh, no, no, you're wavering. If you waver, you're not going to get anything here. You're wavering. Is that what Jesus said? No. no. Lord, I believe. That came right out of his heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. he did, uh, now, this guy doesn't understand. He brought his son to the disciples. He's not, you know, they could not do anything for his, his kid. And so now he's bringing him to Jesus. And he's probably thinking, because, you know, the devil's telling him nothing can be done. You know the devil's telling him this stuff, Right? So now he brings him to Jesus, and he still is taking him time to be convinced. And he says, have compassion on us, man. If you can do anything. And Jesus says, no, if you can believe. Jesus is trying to get it home with him. And when Jesus said those words, if you can believe, that's what hit him. Right. And right up out of his heart, his first, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Those words of God came to him and said, if thou can believe, I believe. Mm -hmm. Came right up out of his heart. And then something else hit him. Help my unbelief. Uh, Kenneth Hagin, I quote Kenneth Hagin, he said, Faith will work in your heart with thoughts of doubt in your head. Or feelings. Or any of that. Now you just can't yield to it, but when it comes to you, you've got a choice. Right? Just because thoughts and feelings come to you doesn't mean you've chosen to believe that in your heart. That's good. Right? I'll say it again. Just because thoughts and feelings are coming to your mind and you're feeling it and you're experiencing it and you're in the midst of it doesn't mean that you've chosen to believe it in your heart. Right. You still have a choice. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil wants you to think. Uh-uh! Oh, oh, you wavered. Yeah. You wavered. You're feeling. You're feeling doubt. You're thinking doubt. So? Try. And you're not going to receive anything. But he's talking about in your heart, you stop believing and you start doubting. You doubt in your heart instead of believing in your heart. That's what he's talking about in James. 
He's not talking about that you you were thinking it or feeling it in your head. Right? He's talking about if you let it get into your heart and let it... You know, this man says immediately something is bugging him and it's his unbelief. What's he talking about? Jesus didn't go into a long steal and go, uh, you know, no, we got to get this fixed. He didn't go into a long steal, did he? No, as far as Jesus is concerned, when he heard, I believe, that was a gift. We've got what we need. We've got faith. Jesus heard the first part, I believe, help my unbelief. All this man has to do is stay in this gear in his heart and not let the stuff in his head change what's in his heart. Don't let the stuff that's in your head change what's in your heart. Okay? Because we're fighting the good fight of faith, right? And what's involved in that? Thoughts, feelings, reasoning, suggestions, all these things. Reminders of failures and stuff like that and bad reports and every other thing, right? That's the fight of faith. These thoughts will be brought to you and come to you every time. They will try to oppress you and try to push in to get you into your heart. They're only in your head at the time. That's where we think we've lost. And he wants you to think you've lost. Give it up. You've lost. You've lost. It's not true. That's why Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. And don't let it be afraid. You can't control what comes to you, but you can control what gets in you, right? Even if you think on something longer than you probably should have, you shouldn't think on things like that very long, you can still catch yourself and say, no, that's not what I believe, and still stay in faith. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean to your understanding. Don't let your understanding sway you. Because that's what it's trying to do. The enemy is trying to use your flesh, your understanding, to sway you. Um, things come and go in your mind, and, you're, and when you're getting something from God, it's not all based on you having a wrong thought or a wrong feeling come to you. The devil wants you to think that. That's a perversion of the scripture. He's trying to distort it. It's a lie. Um, we can see it perfectly here with this man. He got what he needed. He had thoughts of doubt in his head, but he had faith in his heart. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing what he has heard out of the mouth of the master, those words came up in him, and immediate heart response was, I believe. That's his heart. And this is a good lesson to be learned about being led by the Spirit, too. That when God gives you something, it's clear and real, and it's in your heart, and then maybe in ten minutes, all this stuff starts coming into your head, why it can't happen, and what, you know, how is it going to happen, and you don't let that confuse you about what you got in your heart to start with. Mm -hmm. Always go back to that, the word that God gave you, no matter how it feels. And, and that's where I think the struggle is, is trying to get over what we feel. Because it, we, we feel that our feeling <laughs> is so much more real. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but it's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. How many times have we been wrong about things that we thought? <coughs> Excuse me. Tune them out. Turn them off. What does he say? Cast down every imagination. That's right. Their imaginations. That's right. And every high thing. Go back to the simplicity that is in Christ. With what, uh, with what he told you. And then you don't have to see it. Or know it. Or understand it. Mm -hmm. Right? You just have to believe it. Right? Yes. And that's where we need to go. We need to stay focused on what God has been telling us. And then we are to fight that good fight of faith, which is going to be our feelings and, um, and physical things that come against us. I mean, we're going to have uh, things that come against us. You know? So, that's it.